Okay. Okay, um, we'll get started. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Kristen Schultz, and I am an admissions advisor here at SUNY Plattsburgh. Um, I am going to take this evening to just share a little bit more with you about Plattsburgh and what to expect as a student here. Um, any questions that you have, we'll get those answered. And I am currently joined tonight by a current student at Plattsburgh. Um, and so I'm just gonna let him take a moment to introduce himself and tell you guys where he's joining me from tonight. Um, my name is Musa Kito. You can call me MK through our representation. Um, I'm a junior uh, here at SUNY Plattsburgh. Uh, I'm a management information system major or a, a minor in economics. Well, I didn't define it yet, but soon I'll define that. Um, I, I just, I'm into a lot of clubs and a lot of activities and I'm just an outgoing person and just my thing. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, we'll definitely have him elaborate a little bit more in the evening on some of the things that he does here at Plattsburgh, um, how he chose his major, um, and where are you originally from? Oh, I'm from New York City, the Bronx. Okay. Great, so we're gonna kick off this presentation tonight with a poll. Um, so I wanna know where you guys are from. So in your screen, um, you will be able to, in one second, tune in and let me know where you are joining us from. So if you wanna go ahead and select the area that you're coming from, um, that'd be great. All right, oh, we got another New York City person. <laughs> Hudson Valley, great. Give it another second or two for you guys to get your answers in. Awesome, so it looks like we've got a nice little mix here, some New York City, some Hudson Valley, Great, um, I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit more with all of you this evening. And I do have another poll question. So what are you interested in? What got you interested in Plattsburgh? So let's go ahead here um, and submit your polling answers. Okay. Awesome, some good ones. Got a little bit of a mix here. Uh, some of you said the academic majors that were offered, we'll touch on those. The proximity to Montreal and Vermont and the Adirondacks, a great location. Distance from home, that's always a good one. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about all of that throughout the evening and uh, touch a little bit more on all those wonderful things that makes Plattsburgh so unique. All right, so I am going to kick off tonight with uh, just a couple facts about SUNY Plattsburgh. Um, we were originally founded in 1889 as a teaching college, and back then we consisted of only one building, Hawkins Hall, um, the building that you see in the background of this photo. Since then, we have grown tremendously. Uh, we now boast an undergraduate student body of around 4,800. We have over 60 different majors and minors. So for you, those of you that said academic majors was a draw to Plattsburgh, we can definitely talk about all of those options available. We have a very diverse student population including students from about 32 different states and 66 different countries that attend Plattsburgh. So kind of going back to our current student, Musa, what made you choose to attend SUNY Plattsburgh? Um, so at first, like SUNY Plattsburgh was not my first choice to be honest, um, but uh, my, a friend of mine applied and like he got in um, three weeks when he did his application. I wanted to go to New Paltz um, because it was a little closer home. Like, I, I feel like I didn't want to go too far, but I wanted to go a little bit far. Um, but I applied to EOP and New Post took forever to uh, get my application process and everything. So um, a friend told me to apply to Plattsburgh and I applied. And three weeks later, like I was actually on a senior trip when I got accepted and everything. I was like, oh, this is kind of nice and everything. So I came to a realization, I was like, New Paul's? I was like, okay, so let me think about it this way. Because at first I wanted to go to North Carolina a little bit because my mom didn't want me to go there because it was nine hours away. Um, it was all for me and everything, but she was like, no, nah, I want you 
to stay in the city. I want you to stay in New York, but you can't go too far. So I was like, okay, let me go to Plattsburgh. Because if I would have went to Newport, she would have been there every weekend. So, <laughs> and I didn't want that. <laughs> so I decided to come to Plattsburgh then. Awesome. Great. And you, good choice so far, right? You're enjoying Good choice so far. So far, I have no regrets on my decision, to be honest. Awesome. Awesome. So this presentation is going to be an opportunity for me to share a little bit with you what your journey at SUNY Plattsburgh might look like hopefully answer those questions that you have as you start to make your college decision, whether you're a high school junior or a current senior and you're starting to think about where you're gonna be headed in the fall. Uh, this presentation will hopefully help you envision what it's like to be here and get a sneak peek into our campus. So on that note, I have another polling question coming up. Um, what is your biggest concern about making the transition to campus? So if you want to submit your answers, um, is, are you concerned about the academic workload? Um, are you interested in the internships and hands-on experience? Um, finding a faculty mentor, really getting that one-on-one -on -one connection, support services, the classroom environment. Um, what is kind of helping you figure out what your decision is going to be? So academic workload, classroom environment, All right, and the academic support services. Great, well, we will touch on all of that in our presentation, and I'm sure uh, Musa will share more about all of that as we go along too. All right. So, your journey to Plattsburgh is really gonna start in the summer before the fall semester with orientation. Um, you're gonna come to orientation. It's typically held over the month of July. Um, and depending on when you were born, that's kind of how we decide what orientation you're going to come to. But don't worry, we know that summers can get very busy, very crazy. So if you find that you're assigned an orientation date um, and it's just not going to work out because you have a prior commitment, you can contact the orientation office and they can try their best to accommodate your requests for a different orientation. Um, orientation is, is an overnight experience. And during it, you'll have the ability to mingle and meet with other incoming students. So it's a great chance for you to meet your classmates and the people that are going to be starting with you in the fall. You'll get to spend the night on campus in a residence hall, so you'll get your first taste of dorm living. Um, you'll eat in the dining hall. You'll participate in icebreakers and programs to get familiar with the campus and to learn more about each other. Um, you'll also be provided with your first semester schedule of classes. I know this is a big thing for students to, um, that they wanna know what their class load is gonna look like. So you will get this at orientation, um, and so you'll be able to know what your classes are, what classes you're going to be taking when you start in the fall. Um, as we're talking about that, I also want to remind you that if you're taking any AP college level or IB classes and earning credits in high school, you want to make sure that you submit your final transcripts after you finish your senior year so that we can evaluate those credits and see where they will come in. Typically, we will take a three or higher for AP classes. Um, a C or better for college courses, and a six or higher on IBs. So that's just something to keep in mind as you finish up your senior year and make sure that you submit that transcript. Another great thing that you can take advantage of during orientation is the chance to explore the North Country. Um, as you know, one of the students mentioned in the polling, they were really interested in the proximity to Montreal and Vermont, and being in the North Country is a great opportunity to take advantage of that. Maybe you take a trip to Montreal, or you take the ferry over to Burlington, or you just explore Lake Placid and the beautiful hiking trails and things that we have to offer right around our campus. Um, so Musa, can you share a little bit about your orientation experience um, and what it was like a couple years ago before you started at Plattsburgh? <laughs> they put it down, it feels so old now. I feel so old. <laughs> but yeah, orientation is actually, is one of the best things, like, because you get to experience as um thing as Chris said. You can you get to experience co college experience before you actually start going to college. So I advise everyone to come to orientation. It's one of the best. Like I met one of my I met a couple friends over here that I think we're gonna be friends. Like down the line, it's gonna our friendship is gonna continue down the line. Um, when you come to orientation, there's activities that you get to do with like people that you live on the same floor with, or like if you are in the same building. Um, they get to do the experience. They get to do the activities together to bring you closer. And you never know, like the activities helped out in case you guys have a class together. And that becomes a person that you know from orientation becomes one of your closest friends for the rest of your life. Um, 
orientation was really good. Um, the the food was um, um, there's a, a diner hall called um Sundowner that was like the the orientation place for us. Um, there might I um, meant there's Clinton also, so that might be open for uh orientation depending on the time of the year if there's renovation or anything like that. But the food was good to me and everything like that. Um, the the staffs are really helpful when it came to classes. Um, cause I did my first, um, I did my, when I was doing scheduling, I was, I came in as an IT student, so I didn't know what classes to take. So the person that helped me, um, the, did my schedule was helping me like throughout that whole process. And if you don't, if like, cause there's going to be a couple classes already there in, in the schedule already. Um, if you feel like you don't really resonate with those type of classes or anything like that, talk to, talk to the person that's helping you do your schedule. They can help you change that class. And anything like that. Um, orientation really it was just helpful. To, it would just it helped me out in a lot of ways because I didn't know a lot of things about college and like being away for so long. And it, really, it was really great. Great, thank you. All right. So after orientation is opening week or move in the start of the semester. Um, so after orientation, you'll go home for a little bit and then you will return to campus towards the end of August for move in and the start of classes. Um, about one month prior to school starting, you'll receive your residence hall assignment and your roommate. So this is a great opportunity for you to reach out to them, connect with them, kind of talk about what you guys are going to be, what you want to share, different things like that. Um, and there's a couple different processes that you can do in selecting a roommate. First, you can request a roommate if perhaps you know somebody that's going to be coming to SUNY Plattsburgh, um, or if you need a friend at orientation and you think that they might be a really good fit for you, you can request to live together. But if you don't have an option like that, then the second one would be that you would fill out a housing questionnaire. And this questionnaire is going to ask you basic questions like, are you an early riser? Do you like to study with music? Or do you prefer quiet? Are you neat? Are you messy? Um, you know, what your basic daily living interests are so that they can pair you up with someone who will have compatible interests. Um, we have 12 different residence halls on our campus and three of them are freshmen only and two are upper class only. So if we have any transfer students joining us tonight, um, you do have the option to live on campus if you wanted to in one of our upper class residence halls. Also, our freshman residence halls have themed floors, which is really cool, um, where you can choose to live with other students who have similar interests to you. So if you're coming in as a science major or you have a passion for leadership or the outdoors, you can find other individuals who share those same interests and all live on a floor that kind of supports that. Also, when you move into the residence halls, you're going to meet your CA or community advocate during opening week. And this person is really gonna be a huge resource for you living on campus. Um, they will coordinate different events in the residence halls like game nights or other activities that you can join in and meet people. Um, it's gonna be a great resource for you to learn as you navigate the campus. Um, you can ask them questions. Where do I go for this? What do I do for that? They're gonna be an awesome resource for you to kind of help get you adjusted your first semester. So. We do require that students live on campus their first two years. So Musa, can you share a little bit about living on campus and how your experience has been so far? Um, living on campus is really a, uh, is a good experience. Um, I feel like um, if you have a room, cause I had a room, my, me and my roommate went to the same high school. So like we didn't really have um, any problem or anything like that. And we requested each other over the summer. So it was a, it was a breeze. Um, but we didn't get to shoot, like, we just did um, non-preference for all the buildings, so we got stuck in Arondic Hall, but uh, it was it was good. Arondic Hall was good. I liked all my, well, they call them CA now, you know, my time they used to call them RAs. Um, uh, all the CAs are very, if you need any help or anything like that, they're, they're definitely there for you. If you have um, any questions about anything or, um, and every month they have like a, a floor, they have like a floor, floor event where like, Every every resident and the floor is uh, invited to. Um, yeah, I can get like sometimes like some CS are even open to like putting on like a, like they'll create a group chat and put a vote in the group chat and like see um what um you and your floor you and your floor mates want to do like like I actually knew uh, a thing um there was a freshman hall that used to go to um in Vermont for ice cream Ben and Jerry's um they get to vote on that every year that's kind of cool um you can do something like that or Everybody like says a movie night and y'all can have a movie night, watch a movie, you'll get popcorns and everything like that. So 
living in living in dorm um, as a freshman is actually very good because like like it feels like you just went from home to like another home again like the RAs will make you feel like you literally like just left home to come to another home like, that's what it feels like um, so yeah, and as you become familiar with the campus, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of great things off campus that you should take advantage of and become familiar with in the city of Plattsburgh and the surrounding areas. So Plattsburgh is a decent sized city. Um, it is, you know, a, a smaller city, but we have a lot of really great amenities for students to take advantage of. So Uptown, we have three different shopping centers, um, including a Walmart, a Target, a Bed Bath & Beyond, grocery stores, fast food restaurants, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, um, just a great area for you to pick up any last minute items that you may have forgotten to bring or do some shopping and get things that you need throughout the year. Um, and then we have our downtown Plattsburgh area. I would definitely recommend you check that out for more of the local flavor. It's about a 10 minute walk from our campus and there you have um, a lot of local restaurants, Greek, Italian, Asian, um, and the super popular, one of my favorites, Our House Bistro, which has 27 different flavors of macaroni and cheese. Um, eventually I'm gonna try them all, but that's definitely a great option um, and a lot of local things to take advantage of. So that brings me to our next polling question. What concerns do you have about the academic experience? So if you wanna take a minute, I'm gonna put the question live Oh, I'm sorry. I think this question was actually launched earlier, so I do apologize about that. But if you want to re-answer it, feel free. Um, and then we will go into academics. second for you guys to answer. It seems like the workload and the classroom environment seem to be the biggest concerns or questions that you have about it. So we can definitely touch on that and uh, get your questions hopefully answered. All right, so going into your first semester here at SUNY Plattsburgh. So as you begin your first semester, um, students typically take about five classes a semester at Plattsburgh, and that's going to depend on your major, but that's typically the average four to five classes. And you'll usually spend your first two years fulfilling your general education requirements um, in areas like history, math, science, and so on. So this is really where you want to make sure if you are taking any college classes in high school or AP courses that you submit that transcript so that we can make sure that you get those credits um, and you're not retaking classes that you may already have credits for. So also do our best to try and ensure that you're taking at least one class within your major at the beginning so you can get a feel for your program and make sure that that's what you wanna do. Um, you know, a lot of times students come in as one major and they take a class and they realize that's not for me, I don't wanna do that. And so that gives them an opportunity to explore other options at Plattsburgh while still staying on track for four years for graduation. There's also the opportunity to be invited into the honors program at Plattsburgh. Um, and our honors program has two tracks in it. So the first one is the ability to take those general education courses in a smaller round table class of about 15 students. So it's smaller, more intimate. And the second option is to do graduate level work as an undergrad. So in this option, you will actually write a thesis as an undergraduate student, defend it and present it before graduation as part of the program. And you'll also have a lot of support available during your freshman year and really throughout your whole time at Plattsburgh. Um, professors will hold office hours for you to meet with them about classes if you have questions. Um, you'll also have an academic advisor either within your major or within undeclared until you decide on a major to help you navigate that uh, course load and make sure that you're taking the right classes and staying on track for what you want to do. 
And we have our learning center and student support services for those who may need a little bit additional help or guidance. Um, tutoring services are available and things like that. So, Musa, can you talk a little bit about the student support that you have received as a student here at SUNY Plattsburgh? Um, actually, all those support, um, I've been to all those support before. Professors, because I'm in the School of Business, uh, School of Business, they really have like a strong support over there. Um, if you need any help from a professor, you can go to his office hours or like they're so convenient sometimes you just email them like they'll if you can't make it at their office hour in case you have a class or anything like that or like you have other obligations you can just email them and like they'll work around your time to help you out which is really great like i i like i love something like that like my freshman year what that was one of my professors thing like i couldn't go to his office hours because of that so he made time for me and sat down with me and showed me the materials and stuff um, advisors, they're always there. I personally, I'm not really close to my advisor like that, but she has an open door all the time, open door policy. I can just go to her and just talk about anything. Um, so when registration comes, you have to go meet your advisor. And um, I mean, you have to because they have that code for you to register. If you do not go there, you do not have the code to register um, for your next semester class. So I feel like you, that's not the only reason why you should go to your advisor. I feel like you should go to your advisor at all time because they might um, talk to you about like, you know, a faster track to graduating or like classes that you actually need to graduate. Um, it's always helpful to like keep that close relationship with your advisor. Um, Learning Center, Learning Center is a great place to go if you need help with any um, any classes or anything. There are, the tutors are there for you um, to help you. So that's, that's one of the things that every time I meet people from college, they like they will, like they need help, but they always stay silent. And I, I used to be one of those people. Like I would just like, like tough it up. But like oh, the professor doesn't help me. I'll go to the office hour. But in that case, sometimes like, um, the learning center is a great place to go to. You can go there. The professors, I mean, the students is actually students that like took the class before and they excel in the class. Um, some of us might not, you know, some learning from a professor's language it might be difficult. But if you learn from your peers, sometimes. Like it, like you might actually get the material, and you might get some, you might get something from the material compared to learning from the professor and stuff. So, I think going to a learning center is very beneficial. I used it a couple of times for my accounting class and my geometry and my trade class, trigonometry class. Um, it was really helpful to me, and yeah, I think that that's a great service. And uh, student support services, I'm actually in that. Um, I get extra time on my tests and stuff. Um, so that's that's a great that's a great thing actually to be part of. Um, you go there if you, if you feel like uh, you're not getting enough time and like your exams, you can just go to student support services. Like every professor will actually have their number on their syllabus. So I feel like it's actually good the student support services and the professors have a great um have a close relationship. So if you're a student that needs that extra help or extra push or anything like that. Um, you can just contact them. We can just go to their office and they're, they're always willing to help. They have an open door policy also. Um, but yeah, that is. Um, Great. Thank you. So that brings us, now that we're talking about majors a little bit more and what you might be interested in, into my next polling question. Uh, what major or area of study are you interested in? So I will go ahead and put this question live and you can take a minute to let me know. And this is not all of, obviously, our majors here, but these are some of the more popular ones at SUNY Plattsburgh, um, some of the ones that we're more well known for. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we do have over 60 majors and minors to choose from, so there is a lot of variety. So I see we have some education, we have some business, which is great, science, great, all right. Let's talk a little bit about the majors. All right, so declaring a major or figuring out what you wanna study. Again, this is not a full list of all of our majors, but more of the popular ones within each of the schools that we have here at SUNY Plattsburgh. So as you can see, we have separated them into three schools. Our first school is the arts, a School of Arts and Sciences, which will include many of our liberal arts majors. Um, you can find programs in the arts and humanities, including studio art, um, a minor in art therapy, biology, communication studies, journalism, um, psychology, another very popular major, theater, all of those are included in the uh, School of Arts and Sciences. Fun fact, we are actually often called a museum without walls because of the extensive artwork that we have displayed around our campus. 
So it's a great way to see artwork and kind of get a feel for different types of artwork right on our campus. Um, criminal justice is also a very popular major within that school and the hard sciences, like I mentioned, biology, chemistry, biochemistry. Um, and then for those of you maybe interested in the pre-med route, we do offer a biomedical sciences degree, which is our pre-med track for students. And we are the only SUNY school to offer a four-year degree in robotics. So if any of you are interested in that. Um, our second school is Education, Health, and Human Services. And here we offer two different education programs in our five-year bachelor's to master's. So we offer adolescent education where students do their undergraduate degree in a concentration area, such as history or math or science. And then they'll do their master's in education and our childhood slash special education major, which will certify students to teach birth through sixth grade. And if you're interested in something like speech pathology or audiology, our communication sciences and disorders major would be a great route for that. Uh, we also offer four year programs in social work, nutrition and fitness and wellness leadership which has three tracks for those of you who are interested in maybe pursuing athletic training, uh, PT or OT, or owning your own fitness uh, facility someday. Maybe you wanna own your own fitness business. And then we also have a very competitive nursing program. So for those of you that might be interested in nursing, our nursing major is a direct entry. So students that apply as freshmen come in as a nursing student their freshman year. It is very popular major and it is very competitive. So we typically get around a thousand applications for about 55 spots each year. If you're interested in the nursing major, um, definitely reach out to our admissions office for more information. You can shoot us an email at admissions at plattsburgh.edu and we'd be happy to talk to you a little bit more about that program. And then last, our School of Business and Economics, which includes 12 majors and all of our programs are internationally accredited through AACSB which is the highest accreditation for business programs. So that's a huge plus for business students. Uh, we're the only SUNY to offer a four-year major in entrepreneurship. And we have majors in global supply chain management and hospitality management, two very fast growing fields. Um, and if you're not sure what you wanna major in yet, that's totally fine. You have the option to come in undecided and work with an academic advisor as we talked about a little bit to find a major that fits for you. So I'm gonna have uh, Musa talk a little bit about being a business major and some of the things that he has taken advantage of as a student in our School of Business and Economics. Um, for me, like I said, I came in as a IT major, um, information technology. Um, I took a class in that and I didn't really like the class. I took, um, it was called physical computing um, my freshman year and at first, the class, it wasn't like I wasn't doing well in the class. It just, like, I didn't see myself as a coder. And, like, that's, like, something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I decided to change my field. But, like, I went undeclared for, I went undeclared for my freshman year um, thing on um, spring semester to um, thing to fall because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, so I was actually around. I was like, okay. Um, someone told me that I have a thing. Someone was talking to me. They were like, oh, you seem like you're, you seem like you're good at business and stuff. And I was like, yeah, my father owns a business and like business is like my background, like from, from like since I was 12 growing up and everything. And they were like, oh, so you should be interested in, he's like, you like business and computers. So you should probably look at management information system. I was like, I was like, is that like something that has to do with business, like business and computers? I was like, okay, so I'm gonna look into that. So I started doing my research on it. I was talking to my advisor about it and she's like, oh, that she seen me um, majoring from that and like, I'm actually gonna enjoy it. Um, so I didn't declare the major yet. Um, I, so I decided to take um, two classes in the major. I took um, the intro, intro to MIS, which is MIS 275. I took that and it was basically Excel the great thing that I um, certified in Excel in high school before I came to college. So the work was a breeze. Um, I took accounting also, and I really enjoyed um, accounting because um, growing up, I was always good at math. So um, it was, um, so I was like, cool. So this is actually a major for me. So I decided to declare, uh, I decided to declare MIS that entered on the end of spring semester, um, my freshman year. So, um, so ever since then, I've been uh, an MIS major. I actually TA for that class um, uh, a semester, actually a year ago, I TA for that class. Um, I really enjoy um, being an MIS major. 
in the School of Business, the professor always willing to help. Um, I, I even got like a letter of recommendation from a professor for, uh, for a scholarship that I wanted to apply to. So I feel like every major that you'll go into, there's always someone there to help you, to be honest. Great, thank you very much. And that brings us to another polling question. Uh, and this is going to, now we're gonna get into the fun things. What activities would you be most interested in doing at Plattsburgh? So outside of academics, what are you looking to kind of get out of your college experience? So I'll give you a few minutes to answer that. Um, being in the Adirondacks, we have the opportunity for skiing and snowboarding, hiking, um, again, Canada and Vermont being very close to us. A lot of opportunities, so. Right, it looks like we have a lot of people really interested in exploring both Burlington and Canada. So that's great. Um, we'll wait for the last couple answers here. All right, so the, the general consensus is really that you guys are interested in exploring the areas around Plattsburgh. So let's talk a little bit about um, what there is to do as a student. So getting involved, this is going to be a huge thing. So we, you know, definitely want to get involved during college. And I'm going to have Musa talk a little bit more, more in a few minutes about what he has gotten involved in. Um, but we have a lot of opportunities to get involved here at Plattsburgh. So we have over 100 student clubs and organizations to choose from. Um, there's academic clubs, there's honor societies, there's Greek life, ski club, and so much more. Um, we offer a lot of different events throughout the school year school year for you to participate in, uh, including our community night, which is in the beginning of the fall semester, where community members and students and faculty all gather around Hawkins Pond to kind of welcome back and kick off the start of the school year. Um, students get emails daily about what's going on on campus and what's happening different events. So you can always stay up to date on what's going on. Um, and then if there is something that you're passionate about that maybe we don't have a student club for, you can actually have the freedom to start your own club. So you can petition the student life office to kind of um, get some funding and figure out if this would be something that other students on campus are interested in. So why don't you talk a little bit more for us, Musa, about what you're involved in here at Plattsburgh and kind of how you got to be involved in those different things. Oh, got it. Um, so I'm involved in African Unity and National Association of Black Accounting. And uh, I'm part of the Student Association also. I'm, I'm a Senate attorney in that right now. Um, and I'm involved in um, Muslim Student Association also. Um, so my freshman year, African Unity was my first club I ever joined. Um, but I was, don't get me wrong, I was very, um, um, thing. I was an extrovert person. I was very inside. I would stick to myself. I was very shy. I would not go anywhere. Um, but the beginning of the semester, um, they always do like a club involvement fair. Um, the time that I was a freshman, they, like it used to happen outside, like outside. Like, so you'll see like every club, everybody, like it's, it's great energy. Like you're just seeing people just like talking to each other, get, just getting in tune with each other. It's, it's very nice to see something like that. So I was like, oh, okay. So let me get involved in something like this. So I would just mind my business and someone came and tapped my back. I was like, who's this? So the person started talking to me about a club called African Union. He was like, you African, you should take part of your heritage and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, you're right. So I was like, I'm gonna start going to the meetings. I started going to African Unity meetings, and there, um, my first semester, I was actually supposed to apply. I was actually supposed to run for a position there, but uh, something had happened. So, um, my academic, I feel like academic was like a lot, and balancing that with like club work, because I already accepted a position in another club already, um, the Muslim Student Association. So I decided I was like, okay, so I'm just gonna focus on one club and focus on academics. So I decided to stick with um, Muslim Student Association. And um, my freshman year, NABA, um, so the National Association of Black Accountants, um, is, is a national chapter also. So it's not only it just a chapter that's established in Plattsburgh, but there's like there's other chapters and other, uh, other SUNYs and other schools around the country, uh, which is very cool. So um, I was a freshman again when I was, when I was an IT major. Um, the president of the club came up to me. She asked if I was African. And I was like, yes. And so, and she was like, come to my meeting. And I was like, you don't even know me. You invited me to your meeting. She's like, just come to my meeting. And I went there. And after that, I just got in tune with everybody in the club. Um, it was something that 
Um, I really got, I really enjoyed. I would go to the meeting every Tuesday. Um, um, I got involved in my sophomore year, that and African Unity. And ever since then, those two been my life. So I had a student association now. Um, so NABA really, like there's clubs that actually help you in a long way. Thanks to NABA, because they have like a, a, a national convention every year. So I went to that and I ended up getting an interview with Bank of America last spring, like last spring. I got, a bank, uh, I got an interview with Bank of America. So these clubs are not like just mainly, sometimes not only like about like having fun, like getting into more people, but there's actually opportunity that will present itself in these individual clubs and stuff like that. Um, and African Unity was having events. There's always an event on campus. There's always something to do on weekends. Um, so getting involved in clubs is a great way. You, Melissa, can yeah. you talk a little bit about um, what you like to do around town or some things you like to do off campus as well? Oh, like I currently live off campus right now. To be honest, like I don't go in the downtown area a lot. But if I go to the downtown area, it will be, uh, I, I go to Pizza Bonos sometimes um, to eat, to get a bite over there. Because I, I don't know, their pizza is just so good to me. I don't know, it, it's just so good. Um, and their wings is pretty good. Um, I go there and sometimes I go explore around like the, the park area. Um, there's like a statue, the Freedom Bird statue around there. Like there's a beautiful area over there. You know, photo shoots goes on. I take pictures of my friends over there, photo shoots. Um, that's about, that's, those are my favorite, two favorite places in downtown. And Awesome, thank you. All right, so moving on along with student clubs, um, talking a little bit about athletics, maybe you're interested in athletics or you're just looking for a school with a lot of school spirit. Plattsburgh definitely has that. Uh, we offer 18 different NCAA Division III sports. Um, our ice hockey teams are pretty awesome. Every year they are nationally ranked. Our women's hockey team has actually won the most consecutive championship titles in the history of NCAA Division III sports. Uh, we also have a student club called the Cardinal Red Zone, where students get all decked out in their Plattsburgh red um, and paint their faces and get the crowd like really going and all hyped up for the game. So that's definitely another experience to take advantage of as a student, um, going to those different sporting events and cheering on your fellow classmates in all the different areas. Uh, we also offer club and intramural sports. So maybe you're not looking for something as competitive as Division Three, but you do want to stay active in a sport that you've done or you're looking to try a new sport. It's a little more low key, but still very active. Um, and we are in the process right now of re renovating Memorial Hall, which is our student fitness center. And that includes cardio rooms, weight machines, um, a rock climbing wall. So that's all things that as a student, you can take advantage of. Um, to stay active while you are in college. Okay, so we talked about your first year and kind of what to expect, and now your second year is coming up. What do you, what should you anticipate your second year and kind of beyond to look like? So that might be something like adding a minor or a second major. Uh, we talked a little bit about the different minors and the, the variety that we have available. Um, sometimes if you're undecided, this may be the year that you decide to declare your major. So this is an opportunity for you to figure out what you really want to do and declare that major. Um, or maybe you've changed your mind and you're ready to select a different major. Students, you know, may come into Plattsburgh knowing exactly what they want to do. For example, they want to come in, they know they want to go to law school after they graduate. Um, and this gives them an opportunity to explore other majors or minors that may help them on that pathway. But again, students may not have any idea what they want to do, and that's totally fine as well. Um, you may have a hobby or an interest, and that gives you an opportunity to explore what majors can kind of incorporate those into what you want to do for, the, uh, for your, your career. Um, you can add these programs as a minor. But or, or a major. Listed here are some of the programs that work really well together, um, but this is just a basic list and there's a lot more variety out there. Um, psychology and social work, marketing and art, if you're looking for maybe something with graphic, graphic design. Again, as I've mentioned several times, whatever major you select, you'll have an academic advisor who will help guide you and show you those different options. So don't worry if you don't know necessarily right off the bat what you want to do. As Musa mentioned, he came in as something totally different and changed his mind and got involved in business. So we will have a lot of guidance for you as a student um, if you're still unsure of what you want to do. And then with academics, experiential learning. So I get asked all the time from students, you know, what 
kind of internship opportunities are available to me? What can I do outside of the classroom to further my education and my learning about what I want to do? And within SUNY Plattsburgh, within just about every major, there's some type of experiential learning component. So for example, within journalism, um, we actually have our own campus magazine called Do North, uh, which is the in-flight air magazine for Penn Air that flies out of Plattsburgh. We also have a student newspaper for those interested in communication science with disorders. We have a speech and hearing clinic on campus uh, where you can observe patients with speech or auditory issues. Uh, we have a traumatic brain injury center on campus for perhaps for our psychology students um, who are interested in learning a little bit more about how the brain works and how that's related. And we also have an adult daycare for those with Alzheimer's and a nexus program for students who um, want to learn more about those who identify on the autism spectrum. If you're interested in hacking and computer science, we also have a Center for Cybersecurity and Technology on our campus. Uh, it's a great space to kind of go and put on your little white hat hacker space and, and get in there and kind of figure out the ins and outs of um, the interweb. Um, and what's nice about looking at a four-year college versus a larger university center is that you're not competing with research opportunities. Um, as a four-year school, we have an opportunity to get involved in those hands-on experiences that a lot of times are saved for students at the graduate level at larger schools. Uh, we also underwent a large renovation in our sciences building a couple years ago. And with that, we brought in new technology like a DNA sequencer, an MNR machine, um, and a $50,000 radar gun that students can actually take out onto Lake Champlain to collect data sam samples and bring them into the lab. So we have a lot of hands-on experience for students, and we want to get you into more experiences than just sitting in the classroom. Um, so Musa, can you talk about maybe any outside classroom experiences that you've had as a business student? Um, personally, I have not had any outside experience myself, but um, I've been applying to internship. Um, okay. Stuff. I've been hearing about things, but um, I do have a couple of friends that are uh, um, like nursing majors and stuff. I heard that there's actually like a like a simulation doll where like you get to like like have like you run like simulation on it like and you get to like practice on the doll. Like the doll will actually like seem like a person where like you yes. practice. Yes, in our in our nursing lab, um, we do have sim people essentially that will allow students to get the experience of working on a patient with all the same symptoms um, and all the same vitals but before they actually go in and work on an actual live human so that's a great experience for our, our nursing students and are you now in since you're in your junior year are you looking towards doing an internship in your senior yes. year yes i'm actually i was supposed to actually start one um, but it kind of conflicts with my class time because I'm taking 18 credits this semester plus like okay. uh, movements. But uh, next semester, definitely I'm um, going to get into it. Great. So that brings us to our next kind of slide about landing an internship. And as he mentioned, you know, when the time comes in your college experience, you will have the chance to meet with an internship coordinator in your program to talk about the different internship opportunities available and maybe land that dream internship. Um, if there's an internship that you're interested in, perhaps you've always had your sights set on working for a certain organization or a certain business, you can also talk to your advisor about those opportunities and see if that's something that we can coordinate for you and help you get an internship in that area. Perhaps they can assist you in pursuing that if it fits into your program. So Musa, where are you gonna be doing your internship uh, next semester? Um, next semester, because um, I'm still in the process of Bank of America still, um, that's definitely one internship that like I'm pushing through. Um, but um, there's an accounting firm in Plattsburgh. If I stay and I'll get a credit for the internship, it's called Blue Cross. Um, is a is an accounting firm. Um, cause I'm leaning towards becoming an auditor for uh an accounting firm or like a little consultant if um if I get out of the data analytics work and stuff like that. So that's what I'm Great. leaning towards. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so many of you have maybe held some kind of leadership positions in high school, um, or you're interested in just getting more involved in college and taking on maybe more of a leadership role. So you might be asking yourself, well, how can I do that? And I know that Musa talked a little bit about the different leadership experiences he's had through various organizations. Um, and there's a variety of different ways that you can become a leader. 
I would say that the biggest thing is get involved outside of the classroom in our student clubs and organizations. It's a great way to take on leadership roles, take on e-board positions, and kind of get that leadership experience. But also, you can be a leader within the classroom as well. So making sure that you're answering questions and getting involved in classroom discussions and raising your hand and just getting involved is going to be a great way for you to both grow in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And there's a ton of opportunities to get involved. Um, is there anything that you'd like to share on your leader leadership positions that you've had at SUNY Plattsburgh? Uh, yeah, um, for a club executive board, I'm actually the vice president of the National Association of Black Accounting right now. Um, and African Unity, I'm just, um, I'm the public relations. So I take care of the social media page and um, stuff like make flyers and inform, inform, inform students about like our meetings or like things that we have in like events or anything like that. Um, cool. I'm part of student association. I'm actually a senator for that this semester till I graduate. Um, Project Help, um, I actually started doing that last semester just like it's, it's a great way to just get like involved and just help out the community in any way or help out the campus community it, it's great uh, you get community service hours and it, it's really good um great. and yeah basically those are things i got involved in thank you thank you okay and then studying abroad so this is also a pretty popular topic and something that a lot of students are interested in looking into during their time in college um, and because we are part of the SUNY system, we actually have the opportunity for students to utilize the more than 600 different study abroad locations throughout SUNY. So there is an option for everybody. Um, and there's also a time frame that fits for everybody. So maybe you have always dreamt of doing a full semester abroad. Maybe you want to do a year abroad or just something short term like a summer. We have all of those different varieties to offer students. Some classes may even have a study abroad component built right into them. So SUNY Plattsburgh um, is also only one of four SUNYs to participate in the National Student Exchange. So this is a little bit different than study abroad. Um, and this actually allows our students to travel within the United States, not abroad, to different schools um, for a semester to take classes at Plattsburgh prices. So if you are thinking about maybe your dream school for graduate school, or you're thinking that you want to move somewhere else after you graduate and you want to see what it's like to live there. This is a great way for you to travel within the United States to those participating schools um, and really get a feel for what it's like. So you'll take classes that will transfer back to SUNY Plattsburgh for a semester and it's also a really cool opportunity to get out of Plattsburgh for a semester and maybe live in Hawaii or Colorado or California um, and enjoy that warm weather. Okay, so as you move through your time here at SUNY Plattsburgh um, and the different things to get involved in, it's really going to be in preparation for graduation and your next steps. So our Career Development Center is a great resource to help you every step of the way. Uh, you can literally walk into the office with a blank sheet of paper and we'll sit down with you and help you develop that into a cover letter and a resume for applying for jobs or internships or things like that. They also help you prepare for those by doing mock interviews, um, you'll come in fully prepared, dressed, and ready as if it was the real interview. You'll sit down with them, they'll interview you, and then they'll offer feedback so you can see what you did right and what maybe you should work on before you go to the actual interview so that you're fully prepared. They'll also help assisting you with declaring different majors or finding career paths that might be the right fit for you. So if you are undecided and you're still kind of struggling on what you want to do when you graduate or what you see yourself doing, we can offer you a skills assessment test, which will help kind of pinpoint those areas um, that you have skills in that might be good to explore as potential majors or job opportunities. The other thing we offer is our Cardinal Connect, which allows students to look for jobs and internship opportunities, not only as students as Plattsburgh, but they can also utilize that after they graduate as alumni. So maybe you've gotten a job after you graduate and you're looking to make a career change or you're looking to move or you're looking to do something different. You can still utilize that Cardinal Connect platform to see what is available as a SUNY Plattsburgh alumni. So I know Musa, you still have about a year left here at Plattsburgh, a year and a half, um, but what steps are you taking to kind of prepare for graduation within the next you know, year and a half? Oh, definitely. Um, 
Handshake is definitely one, one of the things I, um, I actually started using. Um, I, I did apply to a couple internship for the summer on it actually. Um, and I did, a couple, I did, that's why I did my internship also application. I, um, it's very, it's very easy actually to use. You could just submit your resume on it and it kind of like put you, if you're compatible with like an internship, like with an internship and like the requirement and the criteria of for an internship, it actually like just, it gives you that suggestion actually to submit that application and it's, it's a very easy process. And the Career Development Center is actually a great place to go to if you need help with resume, like Crystal said, um, or a mock interview, it, it's a great place. Career Development is just a great place to be at. Great. So after all that, we come to graduation. And to be honest, your four years here at Plattsburgh are going to feel like they go by very fast. And it is our job at SUNY Plattsburgh to make sure that we provide you with all the resources to be successful both in college and when you leave here. But it's also up to you as a student to be an advocate and use your voice. Ask questions during your time here. Meet with your academic advisor. Take advantage of the services that are offered. As Musa mentioned, he's been taking advantage of a lot of those different services, and that's going to help prepare him for when he's ready to graduate and take that next step into the real world. And if you do those things, you may be one of the over 90% of our students who are in graduate school or have a job within six months of graduation. So those resources are in place to really help you be successful when you graduate. So it is time for another polling question. And I kind of want to get an idea of where you guys are in your college search process. All right. So I just want to see who's kind of joining us this evening. Um, oh, look at that. We have somebody who knows exactly where they want to go and have applied. That's great. So whether you're a high school junior or younger or you're a current high school senior and you're in the thick of that college application and decision, um, you know, I hope that this helped answer some of your questions. And I'm going to go through a little bit now about what we're looking for in a student who is interested in Plattsburgh. Okay. So what are we kind of looking for um, as a student who is looking to apply to Plattsburgh? We are looking for a high school average of, you know, that 85 to 92, middle 50% is what we see students coming in with. Um, we do require either the SAT or ACT when you apply to Plattsburgh. Um, and we're typically looking for with that around a 1060 to 1180 on their SAT or between a 21 and 25 on the ACT. That's kind of the middle 50% that we see. Um, we are not test optional, so we do require one of those two. If you decide to take both the SAT and the ACT, you are welcome to submit both of those scores. If you take the SAT multiple times, we will super score your SAT to give you the best combined overall score. Um, and if you're a transfer student, we're looking in that middle 50% for around a 2.6 to a 3.3 college GPA. Our scholarships are also automatically awarded to students who qualify, and so we review your application for that when you apply. And again, some different majors have different admissions requirements, so if there's something that you're not sure about or you want to see for a specific major, if you're, um, you meet the criteria, you can always reach out to the admissions office, send us an email, give us a call, it's admissions at plattsburgh.edu. And just some dates and deadlines to keep in mind. Um, we are rolling admissions, so we don't have a specific deadline to apply. We will accept your application um, at any point throughout, but we do encourage students to apply by certain dates just so that they can get their admissions decision in. They have time to think about what they wanna do and where they wanna go. So for freshmen, we really encourage you to apply around December 1st. For nursing, I would definitely say around then as well. And for transfers, we encourage around March 1st for the fall semester and November 1st for the spring semester. We also encourage you to submit your FAFSA by December 15th so that we can send you a financial aid package and you're able to see kind of what the cost of college is going to look like for you. And May 1st is our deposit deadline. So if you have decided that you definitely want to go to Plattsburgh and you have decided before May 1st, you're welcome to submit your deposit early, but you have to make that decision by May 1st to submit your deposit. All right, so another polling question. 
How many of you have visited SUNY Plattsburgh? Okay, so we have uh, right now about half, have, half, haven't. All right, so I have a majority of you that have not visited yet. So this will be great because my next slide, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more about the visit opportunities that we have coming up. Um, so I'll give it one more second in case anybody else wants to answer. Okay, so upcoming events on campus and ways to visit. First, we have two spring open houses coming up. So April 4th and April 25th, will be our spring open house dates. An open house is a great opportunity for you to come to campus and kind of get a little bit of everything in one, one day. Uh, you will be able to hear from academic departments. You'll be able to see student clubs and organizations. You'll get to tour the campus and talk to current students. So it's really kind of a one-stop shop to get a little bit of everything in your day. For those of you that have applied and have been accepted to Plattsburgh, um, we will have our accepted student bus trips coming up April 3rd to 4th and the 24th to 25th. And this piggybacks on our spring open house. So if you are an accepted student in the New York City, Mid-Hudson, Long Island region, um, you can take one of our buses up to campus, spend the night on campus, and then attend an open house event. We also will be doing regional accepted student receptions in certain areas. So if you're an accepted student in Albany, Mid-Hudson, New York City, Long Island, um, definitely keep an eye out for those dates coming up. It's a chance to meet with your admissions advisor, hear from current students, talk to the financial aid office and different things like that, um, right in your hometown so you don't have to come to campus. And then for those of you that are not currently um, high school seniors or haven't applied and been accepted, but are just starting the process and ways to visit, we have our Saturday information sessions and our group information sessions which is a great opportunity to come and get a presentation, tour the campus. Uh, we do individual appointments with academic advisors throughout the week, where you can come one-on-one -on -one and talk to an admissions advisor and take a tour of the campus. Um, and all of those things can be found on our website under the visit tab. Um, and you can sign up for all of those opportunities. And there's always new things happening. So make sure that you're checking that. Get on our email list so we can make sure we're staying connected with you and up to date about things that are happening. And Lisa, did you visit campus before you decided to go to Plattsburgh or did you come in and just start out? No, actually, um, I went to the accepted day student bus trip. That's what I came to. And what was your experience with that? Did you have a, a good time? Did you enjoy it? I actually did have a good time. Like, I, like, it was actually so funny because, like, I met a couple people after, like, like now, because people don't, like, we don't remember that we was in the same bus trip. And now that we think about it, we've seen the picture. So two days ago, I seen a picture of one of my friends. And she's like, you was in the same bus trip as me? I did not know that. Like, it was, like, it was so crazy. So, it, like, it's a great experience. Like, you'll meet people. Like, you'll meet people over there, too. So it's always good to, like, stay connected before you actually start coming to orientation or decide to come to the school at all. So. And would you say that visiting was um, definitely something that helped you make that decision to come to Plattsburgh? Definitely, 100%. Um, I definitely, it, it helped me make my decision faster, if anything. Um, I spoke to financial aid when I came. Um, I got my financial aid package, like, right in front of me and everything. So I decided to just head over here. Great. So that is it. Um, my last slide, if it'll load. Ooh. I encourage you guys to stay connected with us. We have Facebook. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. We have Snapchat. Um, it is a great way to kind of get a sneak peek into student life see what our students are up to, see what we have to offer at Plattsburgh, what's going on. So if you want to follow us on any of those plat platforms, you can hashtag Platts Life and kind of see what we have going on. And that is the end of my presentation. I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, I want to thank Musa for coming and sharing a little bit more about his experience. And I hope that we were able to answer all of your questions. Again, if there's anything you want to know more about, just reach out to us, admissions at plattsburgh.edu. Thank you so much.